welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Jessie and today I am going to be sitting down to film the budget results for the second week in September I believe is where we're at now. It's going super fast. So every week I sit down with my budget by paycheck workbook and my deluxe monthly planner from Erin Condren and I write up my budget. We are paid on a weekly basis so I do a weekly budget I sit down, I decide where all of my money is going to go for that week. And then, at the end of the week, I come back, I tally up what I spent, and I see how I did. Did I stick to the budget? Was I over budget? And then if I have any money left over from that budget, I decide what I'm going to do with that money. Am I going to put it into savings? Am I going to pay it towards debt? My husband and I are on a debt-free journey. We have been actively trying to pay off debt all year. We've been making some good progress. So this checking in with my budget on a regular basis really, really helps me with that. And sharing it with you all not only keeps me motivated and accountable, but it also seems to be some big motivation for you guys as well. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna sit down, check on my budget, see how I did. I have this awful red pen here that I must use if I go over budget. The goal is always not to have to use this red pen. As much as I love my Parku erasable pens, I don't want to use the red one. That's the bad color. <laughs> so I also have a black one here. If I am under budget or right on budget, I get to use black, which is always the goal. If I'm over budget, I got to pull in the red pen. So fingers crossed, no red pen today. And let's go ahead and get started. So I have my budget laid out in my budget by paycheck workbook from the budget mom. If I'm not mistaken, pre-orders for the latest version of the budget by paycheck workbook opened up today. So I have the budget mom's website linked down below where you can check it out. I don't make any sort of commission. Uh, I don't get any sort of credit or anything. I just really love this resource. And um, it's really helped me with my budgeting journey, and I want it to help you guys too. I have last year's version, and I have the printable version, which I love because I can simply print out the pages that I need and leave off the pages I don't. Um, there are aspects of her budgeting system that work really well for me, and some that really don't. So I just pick and choose what I like, leave off what I don't. So let's flip back to the back here where I have my weekly budget. I don't know where my little bookmark went, but here is my budget. It was a very simple, easy budget this week. So it should be a very simple, easy budget results. So in addition to this budget by paycheck workbook, I also use a deluxe monthly planner from Erin Condren. This planner is cool because it has a little dashboard section. I just flipped to an empty month so I can show you guys. Uh, and then it has a monthly calendar, which is where I do all of my transaction tracking. And then it's got some notes pages where you can do notes or whatever. Mostly I just use the calendar section. I decorate it using stickers that I made for myself using my Silhouette Portrait Machine. Um, but you can get stickers like this from Etsy. There's lots of budgeting Etsy shops out there if you just go to Etsy.com and search budget tracking stickers, you're going to be opened to a world of possibility. So I just use a color coding system to keep track of all of my transactions. As you can see here is my little key. I just used a Erin Condren compliment card to set up my key. It's all set and ready to go. And then throughout the week, as I'm spending money, I just, you know, stick the stickers down helps me keep track of my transactions. And then once a week, I check in with my budget for my budget results. Sorry if you are not new here. I'm sure you knew all this already, but I've gotten quite a few new subscribers recently. I just hit 6,000 subscribers here on my channel, which I'm incredibly excited about. So thank you all so much for your support. I love you all. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give the spiel to anyone who is new. And now we're going to start tracking our expenses. So 
It was a second paycheck in September. It was a very simple, easy peasy budget. I have been all about keeping things as simple as possible. We're gonna be looking at the transactions that were from September 8th through the 14th, which is the week that we're working on. My husband gets paid again on the 15th and that will start a new weekly budget. This is a week we're looking at. And we're gonna start out by tracking grocery expenses. So let me zoom you guys in a touch. I'm going to try to remember to zoom you guys out and in as we progress through this video so you're not staring at, um, you know, like the back of my hand when I'm not paying attention. So for groceries, I budgeted $150. That's for my family of four. I primarily do my grocery shopping at Walmart. I love Walmart, you guys. I buy everything there. Um, so I did go to Walmart a couple of times this week. And I also went to Gordon Food Service to pick up a few things. So if we look at my key, which just jumped right out of my planner there, we can see that for groceries, it's this pretty pink color. So anything that is written on this pretty pink sticker is a grocery transaction. You can see I did all of my grocery shopping here on Tuesday. So I'm gonna pull in my calculator which is on my phone here. So I'm going to up the brightness so you guys can actually see. I keep my brightness low so that I don't kill my battery. And I'm going to pull up the calculator and we're gonna add everything up. So I spent 35.09 at Walmart. I also spent 110.71 at Walmart and $2.79 at Gordon Food Service for a total of $148.59. Since that is less than the 150 that I budgeted, I get to use black. So we're gonna just ink that in, 148.59. Before I continue, take a second and click that subscribe button. I would love to have you come back every week for my budget updates. All right, let's move on to household. So if we look at my key here, we'll see that household expenses are in this green color. I don't actually have any stickers this week in that color. I did have some household expenses. Um, however, they were at Walmart the same time I did my groceries. I was too lazy to sit down and figure out how much I spent in household versus how much I spent in groceries. I told you guys at the start of the week that I wanted to keep those line items separate so I could keep track of how much I was spending in household and I really failed on that account this week. I'll be better next week. For now, we're just gonna say that I spent zero dollars. All of my household spending happened in this grocery category and I was still under budget, so I'm okay with that. So we're just gonna mark that I spent zero, even though that's not entirely accurate. I know that I spent, you know, within my budget. If I added together grocery and household, I'd have $175 to spend, and I definitely spent less than that, so I'm happy with that. Next up we have Hulu, and I budgeted $15 for that. Whenever I'm budgeting in my regular bills, my streaming services, my cable, my, um, electric bill, whatever it is, I always tend to round up a little bit, even if they're fixed expenses, because you never know when there's going to be an extra little charge or, you know, something's going to go up a little bit. I like to have wiggle room in my budget. I also have a buffer in my account of a couple of hundred dollars that I keep there just in case my expenses are more than what I expect. I'm all about like a contingency plan, um, a backup plan, I also have an emergency fund. These are all things that I've incorporated into my budget over the course of the last couple of years when I've gotten really into budgeting. It works out great for me. I've recently been getting some questions about budgeting tips for beginners. Um, I'm thinking about doing a whole separate video on my budgeting tips for getting started. I'm not an expert by any means. I don't have any education in personal finance. It's just that I've been doing this for a couple of years. I've through a lot of trial and error, I've kind of figured out what works for me. And I wouldn't mind sharing that with you all. So if you're interested in that video, leave me a comment down below and let me know. All right, so for Hulu, I budgeted $15. You can see here that my bills are in this blue color. 
right there. And so here's Hulu and it came in at $11.99. And I just check it off whenever it clears my bank account so that I know it's been paid. So that came in, that was paid and it was $11.99. And lastly for bills this week is Disney Plus. I budgeted $10 it came in at seven, so perfect. Lots of black ink in this first section. So I was under budget, let's see how much. I'm gonna add up all of my actual totals. And I spent a total of $167.58 in this bills category this week. And I budgeted 200, so if we subtract the 167.58 from the 200, we are left with a 32.42. So I'm gonna stick that in here. The budget mom, when she created this tracker, did not intend for this to be the way that this was used. She's got a ton of videos on her own YouTube channel about how to use the Budget by Paycheck workbook. The great thing though about budgeting is you can do it however you want. So even though this isn't necessarily how it was intended to be used, it's how I'm gonna use it. And I can tell you right now, I'm gonna take this 3242 that is left from this bills category and I'm just gonna move it right over here to this extra debt category and we're gonna make an extra debt payment with that. I usually wait till the end to talk about what we're doing with the extra money, but I already know 3242 is going to get sent right to the credit card that we are currently working on, which is the State Farm Visa card. We do the debt snowball method. That's the card with the lowest balance. That's the card we are throwing all our extra money at to try to pay it down. So that extra 3242 that I did not spend this week on bills is going to go straight to extra debt. Huzzah, extra debt payments are awesome. So that's that, lots of black ink. Let's move on to cash envelopes. I do a lot of my spending using cash because I just enjoy it. I know it's not the easiest thing in the world to um, pay cash for things, especially right now with the pandemic going on, as well as with the coin shortage, but I've been making it work for me because I really enjoy that. If you're not a cash spender, don't do it, but if you're open-minded, I think you will find that if you do your budgeting in cash, at least in the areas of your budget where you tend to overspend, I find it a lot easier to not only keep track of what I'm spending, but also to spend less. So let's go ahead and talk about where my money went in terms of envelopes this week. First up, we have my husband's spending money. My husband is a doll. He goes to work every day. He is our single income source, with the exception of a little tiny bit of money I bring in from YouTube. Um, he provides the bulk of the money for our family, but he's not a spender. Um, I give him $40 a week in cash, and outside of that, he's very hands-off with the budget, which, you know, works out really well in our scenario. So I give him his $40, he sticks it in his wallet, I never see it again. I don't know what he does with his money. He's welcome to spend it any way that he wants. But when it comes to the actual amount, it's always exactly as anticipated. All right, next up we have my personal spending. I have been keeping track of my personal spending in my transaction log just so that I can show you guys. Um, before I was doing videos like this, I wasn't really keeping track of it. I was just sticking the $40 in my wallet spending it as I see fit throughout the week. And when the money was gone, I just stopped spending. Um, however, I have been trying to keep track of it for the sake of sharing with you guys when the money went, where it went, that sort of thing. So my personal spending money is in this deep dark purple color, which is my personal favorite color. And if we look here in my planner, I had a couple of transactions. I got a Stitch Fix box this week, which I'm incredibly excited about. Would help if you guys could see that, huh? Oy. Um, I've never done Stitch Fix before. It was my very first box. It hasn't even arrived yet, but I'm already super excited about the whole concept, prospect of it. I'm thinking about doing a whole Stitch Fix unboxing here on my channel, so if you're interested in that, let me know. But um, 
The way Stitch Fix works is you pay a $20 styling fee. A stylist then selects five items, whether it be clothing or jewelry or accessories or whatever, and ships it to you. You try on the stuff in the comfort of your own home. If you like it, you can buy it. If you don't, you just send it back. Pretty cool service. And the other cool thing about it, from what I've from what I understand is that if you do decide to buy something from your box, that $20 styling fee that you paid comes off of that item. So if it's a $20, so if it's a $50 item, you only have to pay $30 more for it. So I think it's kind of a cool concept. I've been watching Stitch Fix videos for years and years and have always wanted to try it. So I finally bit the bullet and did that this week. So $20 right off the bat of my $40 spending went to Stitch Fix. So that's 20. Also took myself out for a little coffee drink on Wednesday morning and that was around $3. I always tend to round up because I don't count my change. Any change that I get back when I am using my spending money, coins I mean, um, I just put in a jar. So it was only like 232 but the coins went in the jar so I counted it as three. And then lastly, I also ordered some jeans from American Eagle. I spent $17. It was actually the total of that was more than $17, but I used Afterpay, which is something that's new to me. I've never really used it prior to these last couple of months, but they break your amount for your total up into payments. It's interest-free. Um, you pay every couple of weeks, I think, and they just break it down into like four easy payments. I like that because I get my spending money on a weekly basis and so I can purchase something that costs more than the $40 that I have if I want to and then just break up the payment so that I'm not going over my weekly budget. Make sense? So $17 went to American Eagle and if you add all that up that is my $40 spending money. So that should mean then that my envelope in my wallet is empty so we're gonna check it out and see this is my cash envelope wallet from Amazon I love it I actually have a second wallet from Amazon coming a different company they reached out and offered to send me one for review I know that you guys are constantly telling me in the comments that this wallet that I always recommend is sold out so trying out another option for you guys so that I can tell you if it's any good and then you'll have more than one affordable Amazon wallet option for you. But inside here are all of my cash envelopes. And if we look at spending, this should be empty, which it is. So all my spending money was spent this week. I'm going to go ahead and check off these because I tracked them. And also these ones that I forgot to check off earlier. And that takes care of my spending, $40. Perfect. Next up we have miscellaneous. Remember when I said I like to have a contingency plan, a backup plan? That's also what this miscellaneous category is. I budget in $50 every single week for anything else that comes up. Anything that's not already written in my budget, that comes out of miscellaneous. There's always something whether it be to cover a little bit of extra spending in one of these other categories or, oh my gosh, I totally forgot that we have this coming up, that 50 bucks will cover it. It's saved my butt and my budget more than once. So if you're not doing a miscellaneous um, spending category, try it out. It's really saved my budget on numerous occasions as it did this week. My miscellaneous spending is in this light green color. I spent 16 bucks over the weekend. Um, it was actually a couple of different purchases. I just used one sticker so as not to waste my stickers. It came to a total of $16. So I had $50. I spent 16. That should mean I have $34 in my envelope. So let's see. $20, $25, $30, $31, $32, $33, 34 left over. This is going to go off to the side for now so I can add any other extra dollars that I might have here in my wallet to it. And then we'll talk about where this money is going to go 
the end of the envelope section. Next up, we have gas. I budget $40 for gas. I track my gas spending in this light purple color. We just had one gas transaction this week. I filled up my Subaru Forester for $27. So I had 40, I spent 27. Should mean I have 13 left in my envelope. I'm trying to kind of speed this up because I realize I've been yammering on and this video is getting long. So we'll check out my gas envelope. There is indeed $13 left. I don't stick this though in my stack of extra cash because any ga gas money that I have left over at the end of the week goes into a gas sinking fund. That way, when I inevitably come up across a week where we need more than the $40 that I had budgeted, I don't have to swipe my credit card for extra gas. Gas is something that is more of a need than a want. You know, I don't have a spending money sinking fund because that's stuff that I want. But when it comes to gas, that's a necessity. So any extra money, I always stick into a little sinking fund. So I have, again, a backup plan for gas money. Don't want to have to swipe a credit card to fuel up my vehicle. So I keep my sinking funds in this accordion folder, which you could see if I'd zoom out. There you go. This is from Amazon. I have all of the stuff that I use on a regular basis linked down below. There's no affiliate links in the sense that if you buy this um, accordion folder, I don't get any kickback for it. I'm not affiliated with Amazon. I don't make any money. There's a couple of links down there that are referral links. So you will, if you make a purchase using that link, I will get a little bit of credit to use on that specific website. Um, for example, my Erin Condren link, if you use that and sign up for an Erin Condren account, I'll get a little bit of credit that I can use on Erin Condren's website. But I'm not making any money, like actual cash, from any of these links. I don't know how to set up like an Amazon store or Amazon affiliate thing. Um, I just put the links down below to help you guys out let you find the cool stuff that I use. I'm not really benefiting from it at all. Except when I hear you guys comment and say, I bought that and I love it too. I love when that happens. So anyways, I got off on another tangent. This video is gonna be 45 minutes long. I'm gonna go back behind my gasoline tab. This um, accordion folder has a ton of tabs and each of my sinking funds gets its own tab. My gasoline sinking fund currently has $100 in it, and I'm going to add this $13 to that, building up a little reserve gas fund. So I always like to keep track of the money going in and out of my sinking funds, so I just write it on a little index card. What is today's date? September 15th already. Wow. Wow mid-month you guys how is September going for you we're gonna add 13 for a total of hundred and thirteen dollars and every time that I put money in or take money out of my sinking funds I always count it just because I'm bad at mental math I make mistakes and I don't want to have less or more than I expect to have that always messes with me all right, so we're gonna count it. 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 105, 10, 11, 12, 13. 113 dollars. So if a week comes up where I'm short on gas, we have to go a very long distance, we have a road trip or whatever, um, I have this in backup to use. So this is going to go back into my accordion folder behind the gasoline tab. This accordion folder will go back into my safe here at home for another day. All right. Now I spent some money on gas. I banked the other amount of money. So the amount that actually went out of my budget this week was indeed $40. Awesome. Lastly, we have eating out, which again, I've zoomed out and you guys can't see. One of these days, I'll get it together. I budgeted $30 for eating out. We went, 
picked up a pizza between the cost of the pizza and the cost of the tip it was exactly thirty dollars my eating out you can see is in yellow there's the pizza 30 bucks check and that means that my eating out envelope is empty right right so all of my envelopes are empty We've taken care of tracking all of my cash envelope spending. Spent 30 there. Let's add it up. So my envelope total that I budgeted was $200. The actual was 40 plus 40 plus, oops, 16 plus 40 plus 30, 166. 200 minus 166 is 34. So that should be what I have here in this little stack. 20, 34, yep, it is. And this is extra money, once again, under budget. Woohoo! I promise you guys, I'm not always under budget. These last couple of weeks, though, I've been really, really good. So I'm going to pull my little sinking fund thing back out because I'm actually going to stick this extra cash into one of the sinking funds that I've been working on which is my campground sinking fund that is a little bit short. Um, we haven't socked away quite as much as I had hoped or anticipated for our campground fund. We have a camper and we keep it all year round at a campground and we pay an annual fee to be able to do that. That annual fee is coming due in uh, late October, it's like 1300 bucks, and we've only saved 947 So, I still have some time. All of my extra cash lately has been going to this fund. So, today's the 15th. We're adding $34 to this. And I'm not even going to try to do that mental math, even though it's probably pretty easy to sum. 947 plus 34 is 981 so I'm going to stick this cash here in this fund. And then once again, we'll count it up and make sure I have what I think I'm supposed to have here. All the denominations together here. And let's count. One, two, three, four, four, fifty, five. 550, 6, 650, 7, 758, 20, 40, 60, 80, 900, 20, 40, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81. All right, now my sinking fund envelope can go back into my safe because I am done with it for today. All right, we're moving on to the second half of my page here. This always goes super, super quick. First, let me write a little note that says that this went to campground. All right, this is always as planned and as budgeted. I do it at the very beginning of the week. I take the cash and the money aside and I put it where it's supposed to go. So this is always as budgeted. There may at some point come a time when you know, I budget for this and then something happens and I have to take the money back out, but that day is not today. So I did put aside $150 into my sinking funds. I did pay $150 towards my State Farm Visa card. As soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm going to make that extra $32.42 payment, the extra from that bills category. So the amount that I paid extra to debt this week will be a total of... 182.42, which is awesome. So technically in this case, the actual was higher than the extra debt total 
which means I was technically over budget, but when we're talking about putting extra money to debt, that don't go in red. That's awesome. Sorry about that, you guys. My camera cut me off. I had been recording too long because I talk too much, but that's everything. I am completely in the black this week, which is a reason to celebrate. I was able to take a little bit of extra money to pay towards debt and a little bit of extra money to stick into a sinking fund that's been a little bit lacking. So overall, this was a great week. I'm incredibly excited. I can go ahead and check off everything for this week because everything has been tracked and I'm ready to start a new week. So if you'd like to see my budget for week three, you guys will have to come back here tomorrow. That video will be up tomorrow provided that um, everything goes as planned. So if you want to check out week three's budget, definitely going to want to click that subscribe button. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Check out all the links in the description box below for all of the stuff that I used. I'm also going to go ahead and link Stitch Fix down below if you guys want to check that out. If you sign up for Stitch Fix, you can get $25 off of your first order, which means that styling fee, that $20 styling fee I talked about, will be waived. You can try it out completely free. I'll get $25 to use towards Stitch Fix as well. So we both win. That's exciting. Um, so yeah, check out the links, subscribe, comment, like. I think that's the end of my spiel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.